Good evening, and welcome to the Superintendent Contract Subcommittee, Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL Chapter 30A, Section 20. Pursuant to that order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the open meeting law's requirements that meetings be held in public places open and physically accessible to the public so long as measures are taken to ensure the, public at the public's access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. God, easy for me to say tonight. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast Channel 98, as well as 1071 HD. The public can access this meeting via this link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton channels. All right. For a minute there, I didn't think I was going to get my way through that. All right, I'll call the roll to establish a quorum. Mayor Sullivan. Here. And D'Agostino is here. Ms. Asak, Ms. Mendez, Mr. Minicello, Mr. Rodriguez. Here. Mrs. Sullivan. Here. Mr. Sullivan. Here. Okay. Mr. Vice Chair. Yeah. If we could take a moment of silence today, the city of Brockton lost a dedicated and decorated police officer, Lieutenant Ken LaGrice. His wake was yesterday, his funeral was today. Uh, just a great, great uh, public servant to our city. Also a heck of a softball coach at neighboring community at Stonehill College. So if we could, out of respect for Lieutenant LaGrice and his family, just a moment of silence, I think it'd be appropriate. May he rest in peace. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> okay, we are a quorum. So we're all set there. We'll move on to the agenda for the evening. This evening, we have two items on the agenda. Uh, the presentation of the self-assessment and proposed goals for 2021 to 2022, and then any other business that needs to come before superintendent contract. Uh, am I turning it over to you or, no, okay. We have Dr. Dr. Connors will get us started. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Um, while we get set up with the PowerPoint, um, just you're, as a school committee body, you're just in a unique position right now because while you are wrapping up last year's evaluation cycle with the summative, we are also entering the next cycle. Yeah. And so the superintendent will come before you tonight and pro um, propose his goals um, for the upcoming school year. So I just want to give you, oh, we're gonna do the superintendent's evaluation. I'm sorry, Tracy. Oh. All right, so the next slide is simply just a reminder of the cycle itself um, that you all participate in each year. So the superintendent conducts a self-assessment with his executive team and then comes before you um, based on their feedback and the work of the district review, the strategic plan, the MOU with Jesse, proposes goals to you tonight. So that's what we'll be doing. Um, tonight, the superintendent will present his proposed student learning goal, his professional practice goal, and I believe we settled on um, three district improvement goals. What we won't be talking about tonight are the standards and indicators in the rubric because those generally are measured at the midpoint or examined at the midpoint and then measured at the end of cycle. So you won't see those um, tied to goals tonight as you have seen them in the past. This is just the fun rubric. It is in your team site as well. And so as I mentioned, the self-assessment takes place with the executive team. Tonight, um, the proposed goals will be presented to you and then in a coming school committee meeting, um, you can vote tonight to approve them and then present them in a full school committee meeting um, in the future. 
go ahead. Yep. This is just a repeat. Sorry. So the self-assessment and goal proposal, again, this is um, the superintendent and his team looking at the rubric, looking at data around student learning, data, data around instruction across the district, and proposes district goals based on um, what we have been through over the previous years. The superintendent drafts four to six SMART goals. We, uh, Mrs. Kopp and I, myself, tried to limit it to about three. Um, in the past, we've had more than that, as you might recall. And for each goal, the superintendent will identify key actions, timelines, and benchmarks. You won't see those key actions, timelines, and benchmarks because those will come um, once goals are fully adopted and the work of the superintendent and his team um, gets started. Just a reminder that while we do this process every year, there will may be times where the superintendent will propose multi-year goals um, that we will, um, you will track progress with every year at the mid-cycle and the end of cycle. So once the goals are proposed, then you decide on adopting them. You can certainly um, enter into discussion tonight on modifying anything as you see fit, because these are the Brockton Public Schools goals um, as laid out to you by the superintendent. And I will turn it over to the superintendent. Appreciate it. So um, we'll start with our student learning goal. Um, this one we've kept the same uh, to ensure students have access to high quality instruction in an environment that prepares them for college and career and reflects their perspectives on curricula, extracurricular opportunities, our facilities, and other issues that impact their learning. So um, again, we continue to work um, to make sure we improve instruction um, for our students and in the environment that prepares them for college and career, um, and also getting their input on other opportunities we can provide them. As you know, this year uh, we've had money to spend, and thankfully uh, you have supported, put an extra money into um, our budget to support extracurricular activities to bring back middle school sports, add uh, middle school football, add um, a lot of money into after school music programs, bring back, um, I think we brought back everything that the middle schools lost in after school activities, bring back the um, things like homework helper, all those things that we've brought back. Uh, and then our facilities master plan, uh, getting their input on uh, what a new or renovated Brockton High may look like. So, because uh, all these things impact their learning. So that's the student learning goal. So next is uh, a professional pr my prof professional practice goal. So in September of 2021, and next week um, during school committee on the 18th, you'll have um, the, the people I work for with um, from DESE um, that have um, with the MOA that we have with, I have, we have with Commissioner Riley. We also, I work with um, two from the Department of Education I meet with every other week, but we also have Laurie Likas from Planning for Success, who works with several districts on how to uh, build a new strategic plan. So this is related directly to um, our district review and how we have to build out a new um, district st strategic plan. So in September of 2021, so this September, we will launch the development of the new district strategic slash improvement plan with all of our stakeholders, which includes obviously the school committee, leading to the completion of a multi-year improvement plan by early April. Um, the school committee will have to approve that plan in April. So it has a, basically a blueprint for improving the district and improving, improving student achievement. This process will support the identification of the initiatives that will serve as a blueprint for improving student, improving student outcomes and closing the achievement gap. So this is a big one. This is basically building the new strategic plan with all of our stakeholders, that's administrators, teachers, that's um, the community, that's you, elected officials, um, our community partners, uh, our parents, and our students. Next, next is um, district goal one, and for some reason this one printed small, so I have to read it from up here. <laughs> <laughs> this is another um, 
obviously, all these goals are very important, but we kept them to three to really get us focused on what we need to do and what we need to improve. So this is uh, build an equitable, diverse, and inclusive professional culture in which all stakeholders invest in, in, in the academic success and social emotional wellness of all students through culturally responsive practices. So this has to do with um, equity and inclusion. This has to do with making sure our students are supported, their social emotional well-being. Again, this is something we focused on um, not only before the pandemic, but especially during, during the pandemic and what we need to focus on post-pandemic. So that's district goal number one. So district goal two, probably my favorite, <laughs> Mr. D'Agostino, uh, implement the new <laughs> Brockton Public Schools Transportation Department. You know how much I love this one. Uh, designed to serve students in a safe and efficient manner. Continue to build the transportation department with the goal of increasing transportation offerings to our students, while at the same time just decreasing the non-net school spending budget. No, I'm excited, actually excited about this. I joke about this one, but it is exciting. I think it's a great opportunity for the city. I thank the, the school committee, uh, myself, Mr. D, uh, me, Mr. D'Agostino, Mr. Sullivan, uh, Joyce Azak. It seems like it was 10 years ago now, but we attended the, uh, the conference of school superintendents and school committees have a joint conference. We attended that now, I think, two years ago? Yeah. It's, it's two years ago, where we went to a presentation um, about bringing bus transportation in-house. And we actually, you know, we, we, we invested in the company coming in to do the, do the um, report on, on outsource, you know, how much it costs to bring buses in-house. Uh, and with the support of the mayor and the city council, We've started that process, uh, as you know, and I, again, I joke about this because, you know, we open in our own transportation company, but I think this is going to be a game changer for the city. Um, as you know, we're up to, I think, 14 million in non-net. We would have been up to 14 million this year in non-net school spending with buses because of the contract with First Student and other private companies. But starting to bring this in-house is going to be huge for the Brockton Public Schools, but also for the city because... Um, you know there'll be tight times again. I mean, right now things are good, but you know how, uh, you know, through history, there are going to be bad times as well. And once we get this new transportation department up and running, then those bad times won't be as bad because we'll be saving probably up to 8 to $10 million a year when it's all said and done on transportation. So, you know, this okay, is... Mike. It'll but, be okay, Mike. Oh, it's going to work. <laughs> Aldo has no choice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, district goal three, um, and this is an important one too as we have seen an influx of, of funding and finally the arrival of the Student Opportunity Act money. To ensure the additional funding from the Student Opportunity Act and the elementary and secondary school emergency relief funds, which is obviously ESSER, stimulus program, um, it, it needs to support the Student Opportunity Act plan, which was approved by the school committee and will be tweaked as we go into the fall. And it has to support the new district strategic improvement plan. So, and I know the committee is, is um, and I'm um, big on this, and you have, and you've made it clear that it's great to have all this money coming in, but we need to be, we need to be accountable for it. We need to be held accountable for it. And what that means is we have to improve student achievement and close achievement gaps. And um, otherwise, all those years we spent advocating for this money uh, won't mean much to the community, won't mean much to the parents if they don't see us doing a better job for their kids. Uh, so basically that's what this goal is all about, is that making sure those funds support a district in a, a district with a structure that sub is able to support teachers um, so they're able to deliver instruction at a high level to improve student academic achievement so that's number three and I'll take any questions I'll go sit back down well first I just want to remind you that Melinda confirmed the defibrillator has been ordered to be installed in your office <laughs> yeah they see <laughs> and and the ejection button has been installed in Aldo's seat in case you decide that <laughs> 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, no, in all seriousness, uh, any questions from the members of the committee? Mr. Sullivan. Just one. <clears throat> I was wondering about the, uh, the garage up on Pearl Street. Has that been, is it done, y'all, a done deal? Um, that one has been uh, rejected by the attorneys, um, by the city solic solicitor and uh, Peter Mello. Um, so it, they won the bid. Unfortunately, the owner won't agree to the um, contract language. And the part of that language is that um, the appropriation every year for that building is subject to, it, basically the money, the funding for that building is subject to appropriation because that's the legal language that has to be put in every contract that a municipality has with a vendor. Um, the, um, the owner of that building will not concede and does, want, does not want that language in, and we can't, as a city, move forward and sign that contract, and the city solicitor, rightfully so, will not approve the mayor signing that contract um, unless that language in there. We can't. Legally, we, it's, it, it has to be in there because... You know budget's better than most people. You don't know what you're going to have for money every year. Right. Just right. because you predict that it's going to be a good year or a bad year, you can't have a, a contract that doesn't give you an out if the taxpayers, you know, if the, we're funded by the taxpayers. And if the revenues, tax revenues aren't there, we have to pull out of a deal. And not hanging, having that language in there would not allow us to pull out, and we would be on the hook for the half a million dollars for that. So right now... Um, we are considering all other options. We're probably going to get put out another RFP. Okay. Um, for, and we are looking at other properties that are available uh, throughout the city, but um, obviously the attorneys would not allow us to move forward with that lease. Okay, thank you. Welcome. <clears throat> all right, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that, that's one of those things we just can't do anything about. And honestly, it, it wouldn't be the, the fiscally responsible thing to do even if we could because, again, like you said, if the tax revenues aren't there, if something happens with the city financially and we have other emergency priorities, you know, um, again, we would be locking the taxpayers into something that legally we shouldn't be locking them into anyway. So um, upward and onward, and I'm sure we will figure that out in time. Mr. Vice Chairman, I'll just follow up on that. Uh, just again, every year we have to do appropriations, right? That's the whole budget process. So the owners of that property did not understand that we have to make it subject to annual appropriations. I mean, that's how you do a municipal contract if you're a city or a town. You have to. Uh, their lawyers disagree with our lawyers, and our lawyers, both Peter on the on the school side and on the city side, Megan Bridges said. We cannot, in good faith, have anybody sign this because it's you know a dereliction of duty. It's not the process for, for uh, municipal financing. So um, we are actively looking right now. We will, um, Mike and Mark and I have been talking about this on a regular basis. We will find a suitable, if not better, location. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh, okay. Anyone else have questions on the presentation from the superintendent? Um, well, and I'll, I'll make a, a comment then myself. Um, first of all, I appreciate the work on this, and, and Dr. Connors, I appreciate your help and work on this um, process too. Um, you and the superintendent and Carrie Cobb, and um, I know Melinda and Donna are involved, and um, it's, it's, a, it's a big process just getting everything together um, for us to then turn around and do our job, which is also um, a pretty big process to do, to do the evaluation. So I just want to make sure I thank everybody who's involved in all the prep work, thank the committee members for the thoughtful uh, evaluation process that they'll be engaging in, um, you know, because this is, this is one of the most important parts of our role as the school committee is, is to supervise the superintendent, right? And right next to that and on the, and, and and equally important is is the budget those are you know our two two biggest things that we that we are responsible for so this is really important and i appreciate everybody's time and effort on that and i do want to compliment the superintendent the job that he has done leading the district through covid um you know you, you've done a stellar job you really have um and and uh you know i know i've i've heard that 
other superintendents in other districts have not been up to the task and have even in some cases bailed out. Um, and uh, but you, you know, were the steady, um, the steady hand that the district needed at a at a difficult time. Um, and uh, you know, I look forward to next year starting off school with all the kids in school. And uh, you know, because I don't want to watch a grown man cry in a school committee meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at any rate, no, you've really done a wonderful job and, and have been a spectacular leader for the district during this, this really just crazy situation. So, um, Mayor. I want to piggyback on that. I mean, Mike's one of us, right? I mean, he went to the school. He's a product of the Brockton Public Schools. The guy bleeds red and black, you know. Mm. So, you know, my, my view, I mean, I've, I've known Mike for decades, but my view changed uh, Working with him as mayor and superintendent, we talk many, many times per day. Uh, and he and his team, the success is always with the team. His team is exceptional. The dedication is there. And at the end of the end of the day, um, the whole purpose is for the boys and girls, for the students. So kudos to you, Mike. Appreciate your friendship and your professionalism. Anybody else? All right. Uh, agenda item number two for superintendent contract subcommittee is other business. Do we have any other business related to superintendent contract? Everybody good? You, we all have the access we need for the materials and you all know how to get a hold of Dr. Connors and Carrie, Mrs. Cobb if we need to. Oh, Judy, go ahead. So will we get the, um, the f um, form pretty soon? Or? It's, it's online. There isn't a paper form. Do you want to? Yeah, thank you. No, last time it went to our email. And then we just open it and fill it out. So what was, the, I'm sorry, what was the question? Oh, are we, is there an email coming with the form? Or just log in? Yeah, by logging in. Electronic. Yeah, electronic. Perfect. Um, so everything is housed in the team site that we showed you the last time Mrs. Kopp and I were here. Um, all of the um, evidence is, it's, there's a lot of evidence there already. It is still, there's still more being added. Um, there's plenty to get you started. And it is, um, if you're in your team site and you go to files, you'll see an evidence folder and within that folder, there is, are folders for the student learning goal, the professional practice goal, and each of the three district goals, and the evidence is contained within. I think we also mentioned last time that some evidence lives in many, you know, one piece of evidence could live in multiple places, and that's okay because it's normal that we, we don't live in isolation and the work isn't in isolation. The form that you complete is in your own private channel. We were very um, cognizant of the feedback you gave last time where you want to be able to work in the form, step away from it, know that your work is saved, be able to go back to it. So when you log into the team site, you go to your channel. Um, I was looking at it today before I came here and um, Mrs. Kopp was adjusting my access so I couldn't specifically see, but she did show me that you have a channel. Your form is in the channel for you to complete. When that is all done, Mr. D'Agostino then has access to be able to put it all together for you. So that should afford you that opportunity to work on the, the form in small bits at a time and not worry about losing your work. Excellent, right. So it's all, everything is within that office environment, that Office 365 environment for us. Yes, and it, if at any time you need us for technical support or to look at things, talk things through with you, you can call either one or both of us and we're happy to either hop on a Teams call or a phone call, whatever you need um, to meet up with you. We're here to support that process, just let us know. Awesome. All right. Anything else? Do you? Hey, thank you. Yes, it's all posted. We didn't email anything. Um, so we cognizant. Also, I lose things sometimes in my email. I hate to admit that in public, but <laughs> today I was like, wait, you sent that to me? So that's why we housing everything in one place that you can just go to Teams and it's all right there. You don't have to worry about digging through emails to find things. Thank you. You're welcome. And I think that's the nice part about all the evidence being in not only one place, but because it's Office 365 as a subscription, they don't, you, we don't have the issues that we had a couple of years ago where 
oh, I'm on Office 2000, I'm on Office 2010, and now it looks different and it doesn't open the same. And you know what I mean? We're all using the same technology and the same up-to-date platform. And it's easier for the staff, too, because they can just post the evidence right there for us rather than, okay, we've got to deliver eight copies of this material to the school committee or email it and does it go through and sometimes there are issues with, and then can you find it in the, if your email inboxes or anything like mine, the sea of emails that come in, now let me go back and find the evidence they sent me two weeks ago, you know? So it hopefully will be a, a much easier process from that perspective with the, the technology we've incorporated this time. And again, I, I, thank, I can't thank uh, Dr. Connors and Mrs. Cobb enough for that, for their help and for their, uh, not just their role in it, but you guys did it. So thank you so much for everything that went into that. Uh, anybody else? Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, this is more for Dr. Khan. The On the evidence that's submitted, is there any evidence or data as far as, uh, you know, staffing or teacher assessments on the superintendent that's, um, that's given? Um, do you mean like student and staff surveys that yeah. would evaluate the superintendent? Yeah, is we've there any of that? We've never done that. Ever, that. We've never done that in Brockton. Um, you know, that's something that the superintendent and the school committee could discuss going forward. There was language at one time, and we have not done it in Brockton, you know, with the teacher evaluation piece about student feedback, student family feedback as part of their evaluation process. We don't do that in Brockton. I believe Desi stepped away from it, but I. It, that's been a long time ago since we've had those conversations, but that's never been done for the superintendent. It doesn't mean if that's something that you want to look into going forward. Um, we would just have to look at the regulations and see if that's still in play. But there would not be anything this time around to know. All right, thank you. All set. Anybody else? All right, if there's no other business to come before the subcommittee, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion to adjourn by Mr. Sullivan, properly seconded by Mrs. Sullivan. <clears throat> Call the roll. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Vice Chair says yes. Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Uh, Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. All right, thank you. This subcommittee's adjourned. One more, Mark. Yes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I thought I... <laughs> There's too many Sullivans. <laughs> Sorry about that. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and now we are adjourned. I'm sorry.